You're listening to Animals Today on the Desert's News Talk Superstation, K News Radio. Live from Palm Springs. Here again is Dr. Lori Kirshner. Welcome back. We're pleased to have Captain Paul Watson, founder and president of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. Welcome, Captain. Oh, thank you. Thanks for being here. There's so much I want to talk to you about. Um, let's first start with the situation of seals and the Canadian seal hunt. I find it incredible that in 2009 that this can still be happening. Tell us about it. Well, this year the Canadian government increased their quota from last year by 55,000, so they want to kill 338,000 uh, baby seals. But they're not going to get that quota because um, the our campaigns uh, with many other organizations combined have uh, convinced the European Parliament to that they're going to ban these seal pelts. You know, Ireland banned them on the 17th of March. Uh, Spain banned them a week later. They're banned in Belgium and the Netherlands. The price of seal pelts has fallen so uh, dramatically that uh, they're not going to go out there. It's not worth their while going out and getting them, although some sealing is taking place. But uh, we just have to keep the pressure on, and I think we're going to end this thing once and, and for all. What can we as individuals do? Uh, well, the best thing, of course, is uh, you know to put pressure on the Canadian government. Right. They've been very stubborn, but uh, fortunately, uh, President Obama's against the seal hunt. The European uh, uh, Parliament's against it, and uh, you know the whole thing's on the ropes. But Canada's being really stubborn. They actually raised the quota just out of spite. Uh, but the first time a Canadian senator, Senator Mac Harb, uh, has come out and uh, with a motion to ban the seal hunt, and that's the first time that's ever happened. So, you know, if people can encourage Senator Harb. To, uh, you know, in his motion, that would that would also help. Now, you just mentioned Barack Obama. On your website, there's a letter written by Barack Obama from April 2006 opposing the slaughter of seals and restricting the sale of seal-based products. So now it's three years later, and <laughs> and and he's uh, he's still opposed to it, but uh, you know he hasn't said anything as president. But uh, that is, that is his position. And uh, the seal hunt was uh, banned uh, last month by President Putin in uh, Russia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the Russian seal hunt's been shut down, and the uh, sealers have been compensated. So I find it amazing, as a Canadian, I find it amazing that the Russians can, and especially coming from the ho- former head of the KGB, can shut the seal hunt down and describe it as a bloody, horrible business, and yet the Canadians continue to do it. Right. Last year, one of your ships in Canada was boarded by a SWAT team. What happened? And give us the status on that situation. They seized uh, our ship, the Farley Moat, and arrested uh, two of our crew. I wasn't on board because I was a Canadian, and uh, that would have made things really politically difficult. We wanted to have a European crew uh, be, to put pressure on the European Parliament, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, the ship was boarded outside of Canadian waters, outside the 12-mile legal limit, with a SWAT team, and everybody was arrested for the horrible charge of, uh, of witnessing a seal being killed. Uh, in Canada, it's illegal to videotape film or, or witness a seal being killed under the Seal Protection Act, if you can believe that. It's illegal to witness it? <laughs> yeah, it's a crime. It's uh, called the Seal Protection Act. You cannot approach within a half a nautical mile of any seal being uh, hunted without permission of the Minister of Fisheries. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. And uh, so uh, Captain Alex Cornelison and First Officer Peter Hammerstedt, Alex is from the Netherlands and Peter's from Sweden, were both charged with uh, violating the Seal Protection Act by approaching within a half a nautical mile of the seal hunt. And they face a hundred thousand dollar fine and a year in prison for that. Oh my God, that's but incredible! They also seized our ship without an arrest. It was never arrested, and they held it. They're still holding it a year later, and without a hearing, without a summons, without a court order, they just simply went ahead and they're ordering it sold. And so they stole in our ship. So it's just out and out piracy. What What can you do? Well, the, we we talked to lawyers, and they said, well, it would cost about half a million dollars to fight it. So mm-hmm. it's just not worth it for us because that ship isn't worth that much. But um, it's, I, I just find it uh, incredible that the Canadian government can seize private property without due process. Yeah, it, it is incredible. Um, Captain Watson, let's talk about whales. Uh, what are the trouble spots in whaling, and what's the conserv- Conservation Society doing? All whaling is illegal and has been since 1986. When so there's no, legal in, there's no legal whaling. It's all there's illegal. No legal commercial whaling anywhere in the world. Mm. And uh, since 1986. <laughs> what happened then is that Japan came up with this thing called scientific research whaling, which is what they're pretending to do. And they, they want to kill a 1,000 whales every year in Antarctica. And uh, they haven't published a single peer-reviewed scientific paper on this so-called research, and all the whale meat ends up for market in Japan. But uh, since uh, for the last five years, we've been able to go down there and uh, confront them, harass them, uh, 
chase them, and we've cut the quota in half every year. Is it illegal? Is it legal for you to chase illegal whaling ships? Well, uh, we've not been uh, charged with any crime. Okay. We've not injured anybody. Uh, the law is very, very strange. But what the Japan is uh, in violating is the uh, moratorium on commercial whaling. They're targeting endangered whales in an established whale sanctuary in violation of the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species, in violation of the Antarctic Treaty, and they're in contempt of a federal Australian court order that prohibits them from whaling in the Australian Antarctic Territory. So we certainly have a whole list of their illegal activities. And uh, we haven't uh, been, of course, Japan's always just say we're guilty of eco-terrorism, but there's no, there's no such law, uh, there's no such crime as eco-terrorism. So, so what do you do? You, you, cha- you disrupt their activities, is that right? Yes, we chase them and chase them and chase them, and while they're running, uh, they don't kill whales. This year we chased them for 3,000 miles along the coast for six weeks. Oh, way to go. And, and, la- and last year we did the same. And what they're really afraid of now is that all of this is in a, a major television show called Whale Wars. And um, because of that, it's reaching people all over the world, and it's really embarrassing Japan. So they become quite humiliated by this whole thing, and they're, they're trying everything to get that show off the air, but of course they're not going to be able to do yeah, that. The, yeah, that's just great. Um, have you, I mean, are you, <clears throat> do you protect yourself somehow? Or have you been shot at? Have you been threatened? Oh, we were threatened. We were shot at. Last year I was struck with a bullet, but I was wearing a bulletproof vest. Uh, they throw concussion grenades at us. They use long-range acoustical device weapons to try and incapacitate us. They tried to bring our helicopter down with that this year. Uh, we had three collisions uh, with them this year while blocking their whaling operations. Uh, so it gets pretty uh, dangerous, but the important thing is that we've never injured anybody, and, uh, we, and we haven't uh, been charged with any crime for what we're doing. But we are. I think last year we cost them $75 million in lost profits. And what could an individual do about that if we well, want to help you? Well, the thing is uh, really support us. I mean, we're really a Navy, you know, for the whales yeah. and uh, representing our clients, which are the whales. And, uh, you know, we're a very small organization because we're rather unique in that we don't send out direct mail outs and knock on people's door. People come to us. And we've grown slowly over the years, but we do have a loyal following. But the stronger we get, the more supporting members we can get. Uh, the more effective we become. If you're just tuning in, um, I'm Dr. Lori Kirshner. This is Animals Today on Caney's Radio. We're speaking with Animal Crusader and President and Founder of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, Captain Paul Watson. Um, Captain Watson, how about dolphins? Are dolphins being hunted or abused? Oh, yeah, that's a real problem. In the Faroe Islands, they're killing 3,500 pilot whales every year. We've been fighting that for years. Japan, they kill about 20,000 dolphins on, on Japanese beaches every year. We're making progress there. In 2003, we went there and exposed the, uh, the killing of the dolphins in Taiji, Japan. Um, two of our crew were arrested for freeing 15 of the dolphins and uh, were jailed for three weeks. But we managed to, um, you know, certainly put this on the map. And now there's a major film called The Cove, which totally uh, exposes what they're doing there. And um, so we're putting a lot of media pressure and a lot of public pressure on Japan to stop it. But it is a brutal, brutal slaughter. And... Uh, you know, it's all over the world as uh, fishermen uh, destroy their uh, the, the fishing industry because uh, there is no sustainable fishing industry. They're looking for uh, convenient scapegoats, and they scapegoat dolphins or whales or seabirds. And they're in their mind, all they have to do is eliminate seals and dolphins and, and seabirds, and the fish will miraculously come back. But the fact is, is that the uh, there's too many people and not enough fish, and that's why fish are disappearing. Yeah, I definitely want, I, I'd like you to talk more about, um, you wrote an article, we need to stop eating our oceans. I want to, I want to touch on that. I have a few more questions, though, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, it's a very interesting article, by the way. Um, what's happening in the Galapagos? I read you have uh, stationed a permanent floating base there. We've been in the Galapagos Islands now for nine years and working in partnership with the National Police and the Park Rangers. We have a full-time patrol boat, and uh, that's been operating for years. And we've, I think over that time we've apprehended and seized 65 poaching vessels. We've stationed a barge up on uh, north and, uh, Wolf and Darwin Island in the extreme northern part of the islands to have a 24-hour surveillance against poachers, and that's been very effective. We also have our own uh, canine unit, uh, which are police dogs, which are trained to... Uh, sniff out shark fins and, uh, and sea cucumbers, and, that, and that's become very effective. And it's better that we have them because, uh, you know, the police wanted this, and we decided to take it because uh, we felt that we could take care of the dogs far better than the, than the police. So we're working in partnership with the police, and uh, we make sure those dogs are treated very, very well. 
but uh, they, they're extremely uh, confident. They can sniff out a shark fin on a fishing boat, which is pretty good. Yeah. Tell us about the origins of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. I set up the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society in uh, 1977. I was a co-founder of Greenpeace in 1972. I left Greenpeace because I just really got tired of protesting, and I wanted to set up a, a more effective organization, uh, an anti-poaching organization, and that's what we do. We don't protest. We intervene against illegal activities. Right. All of our targets right. are criminal operations. Mm-hmm. Now, this talk show and Animals Today and our nonprofit organization, Desert Paws, our primary mission is education. Do you get a chance to educate children about what's happening in the seas? Oh, we do speak to schools in that, but uh, our primary um, uh, activity is, is intervention. We're more of a, a law enforcement group, and we operate in accordance with the United Nations World Charter for Nature, which allows for non-government organizations to uphold international conservation law. But when we get the opportunity, we do speak to uh, schools and universities. How can people get involved if they want to help your cause? Do they, what, what, do they check out your website, or, or what, what can you recommend? They can certainly come to our website at seashepherd.org. Uh, you know, people can volunteer to uh, crew on our ships. That used to be easy, but now with the whale wars, we're getting so many crew applications, it's becoming more and more difficult. But, um, but we're also trying to get a second ship to be more effective in Antarctica and because we need a faster vessel to keep up with the harpoon vessels. So the, the, more, the more people we get supporting us, the stronger we become, the more effective we can become. Yeah. You have a vessel named the Steve Irwin. Uh, how did that come about? And did you know Steve Irwin personally? Yes, I did know him, and he was going to come down to Antarctica with us, and I was going to meet with him about that, and then uh, that was two weeks after he died. It was this guy, we were, I was scheduled to meet with him, and um, so he, was, he never came down to Antarctica with us, of course, but I asked Terry Irwin, uh, you know, I said, well, maybe we can name the ship after him and bring the Steve Spirit down to Antarctica with us, and it was a good move because um, the Australian people, you know, really rallied, rallied around that. Yeah. You have a rewards program where you give monetary rewards for certain information. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yes, we uh, give rewards to people who turn in information that leads to the conviction of people who are illegally uh, exploiting uh, animals in the sea, everything from fish to to whales. In fact, one of the things we have in Reunion Island and different places where they use kittens and dogs as as live bait to catch sharks. And so anybody can get us documentation on that, then we pay rewards. So... It's really, a, it's, it's an international reward system. Yeah, it, that's wonderful, and it's, it's just incredible and disgusting what's going on, isn't it, Captain? We're going to re- continue our discussion with Captain Paul Watson about his remarkable life defending animals. I'm Dr. Lori Kirshner. This is Animals Today on AM 970, 1140, 1250, K-News Radio. Who looks after your kids' precious eyesight? At Focus on You, you'll meet Dr. Peter Spiegel, board-certified ophthalmologist and the area's only specialist in pediatric eye care. As the author of two textbooks, Dr. Spiegel has the expertise to treat conditions from blurred vision to lazy eye. With partner Dr. Lori Kirshner, Focus on You offers quality medical and surgical care for most vision and eye conditions. Our optical department offers a wide selection of stylish eyewear. Focus on You, 111 Town Center in Palm Desert, where the focus is on you and your kids. Hey, what's that? It's the new animal adoption page from Desert Paws. In the desert, son? That's right. Comes out every month on the last Saturday. Look at all those cute dogs and cats. You bet they're cute, but they need good homes. How come you know so much about the Desert Paws animal adoption page? That's how we got Sparky. He looks so handsome that we called the phone number under his picture, and we went and met him at his shelter. He's been with us ever since. I hear that the animal shelters are overcrowded. They really are. But Desert Paws is helping all the valley shelters adopt their dogs and cats. Please help us help the animals by supporting the animal adoption page. Visit DesertPaws.org. Hi, I'm Bob Barker. Because of pet overpopulation, we are killing about 17 million dogs and cats, puppies and kittens, every year. What's the answer to this horrible problem? Spay neuter. It's the only thing that will stop the killing. For more information on how we can get out of the killing business, call International Society for Animal Rights, 1-800-543-ISAR. That's 1-800-543-ISAR. From the smallest critters to the biggest living creatures, you're listening to Animals Today with Dr. Lori Kirshner on the Desert's News Talk Superstation, AM 970, 1140, 1250 K News Radio. Live from Palm Springs, here's Dr. Kirshner. Welcome back. We're speaking with Animal Crusader and President and Founder of the Sea Shepherd 
Conservation Society, Captain Paul Watson. Um, uh, Captain Watson, you wrote this article, We Need to Stop Eating Our Oceans. Tell us in detail about what you're talking about. Well, you know, I was raised in a fishing village uh, in eastern Canada, and uh, since the 50s I've seen a steady diminishment of uh, of life in the sea. Every single fishing industry in the world is in a state of economic collapse. There's simply not enough fish to feed the ever-increasing demand from people. So we're literally destroying life in the sea by eating the oceans. And uh, so, you know, we would never tolerate this kind of activity on land. I mean, just going through the oceans, netting, hooking, uh, everything that moves and utilizing it. Um, there's no difference, really, when you think about it, between a bluefin tuna and a lion on, on, in the Serengeti. They're both large predators, but one lives in the ocean, and we just don't think nothing about destroying it. Right. But, uh, we've destroyed 90% of the large fishes in the sea. We're taking uh, 75 million uh, sharks out of the ocean every year just for their fins, for shark fin soup. We Not only that, 30 to 40% of the fish we take out of the ocean is fed to livestock, um, for instance, the pig is now the, one of the largest aquatic predators on the planet. Chickens are eating more fish than puffins in the North uh, Sea. Danish fishermen are going out there and they're taking uh, sand eels, the primary food of the, the puffin, uh, thousands and t- thousands of tons of this and grinding it into fish meal to feed the chickens on factory farms in Denmark. The whole thing's just bizarre. I mean, domestic house cats are eating more fish than all the world seals put together. So we're just literally scouring the sea, strip mining the oceans, taking life out of the oceans. And I can tell you right now, if, uh, if the oceans die, we die. And uh, so it's really a, a suicidal move that we're doing here. Mm. Do you have an opinion on fish farming? Well, fish farming is incredibly destructive because to raise one salmon on a salmon farm requires the taking of an average of 70, sometimes 100 fish out of the uh, ocean to, to raise them. They're carnivorous animals, therefore they feed them fish. So anchovies and mackerel and uh, sardines and pilchers, all these fish are being just wiped out just to feed the salmon farms in Chile and uh, British Columbia and in Norway. So it's an extremely destructive thing. And not only that, the salmon farms are breeding salmon lice, which are attacking and killing wild salmon and spreading diseases to wild salmon populations. Hmm. Now, you you don't eat fish, I take it? No, absolutely not. Do you eat meat? No, we're uh, vegetarian. In fact, our ships are run as vegan vessels. Good for you. And, and have been since uh, 2000. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have people come on board. We don't really preach it. We just have people come on and experience. We just say, look, this is a vegan vessel. Uh, we're not going to preach to you. But it's amazing how many people uh, find that after two months on the ship that they keep that diet because it's healthy. And uh, they recognize that, you know, it's not that difficult. It's not difficult. Uh, it's not difficult. I've been a vegetarian for many, many years, and it really isn't. Um, I, I just find it amazing that we still do this horrible seal slaughtering and everything that you mentioned this this last segment, of, and it's it, it just still is going on, It's it, and it's allowed to happen. And like you mentioned, it's illegal to observe it happen. It's just incredible to me. Um, you mentioned about sharks and sh- shark fins. Can Can you... Go back on that. What, what do we use shark fins for? There's an increasing demand for shark fins because of um, more and more people are becoming affluent in China. And as China, Chinese society becomes more affluent, they want shark fins. It's a traditional dish at Chinese weddings for wealthy people. And uh, so really what they do is they take the shark fin off, throw the animal, the rest of the animal is thrown back into the sea. So and the shark, shark fins are then, they have no nutritional value at all. They, they, they taste like chicken or pork or whatever they cook them with. But it gives us sort of a special type of uh, of uh, texture, and that's what shark fin soup is. It, and it, it's legal to do that, of course. It, well, uh, mo- most of the sharks that are uh, being taken are they're taken illegally. They're killing 300,000 sharks in the Galapagos National Park Marine Reserve alone, and uh, we're trying to stop. So a good percentage of these sharks are being taken illegally, but it is legal to sell it in China, of course. And so they they catch the sharks, they chop off their fins, and then they throw the sharks back in the water to die yes or to sink and die yes yeah that's uh wow well. um and of course it's hard to get sympathy for sharks because you know we've been taught to hate these animals right right but they're not as dangerous they're not the dangerous monsters that everybody thinks in fact it's more dangerous to play golf than it is to go swimming with sharks more golfers die from being hit by lightning every year than people are, are attacked and killed by sharks 
The average number of people killed by sharks every year is five. The average number of people killed by ostriches are 100. So the ostrich is 20 times more dangerous than the shark. Yeah, but also just because an animal is dangerous doesn't mean we have to to, to treat them and, and to no. abuse them and to to uh, act inhumane. I mean, this is this is really no, right. But, that, but it does make it a little more difficult right. to defend them. Because I understand. Of, because of that. But the, what we're trying to say is that we have a, within Sea Shepherd, we have a group called Shark Angels, which are women who actually are divers who go out and they swim with the sharks and they, and they, to prove that they're not these dangerous animals that everybody thinks they are. And that, uh, they're very intelligent animals that, uh, but most importantly, they're absolutely essential for the survival of life in, in the sea. They're the apex predator. They have shaped evolution in the oceans for 450 million years. And if we wipe them out, we're going to cause a major problem within marine ecosystems. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Lori Kirshner. This is Animals Today on K News Radio, and we're speaking with uh, the president and the founder of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, Captain Paul Watson. Um, Captain, talk about Lush Cosmetics. We're in partnership with Lush Cosmetics, uh, and um, you know this is a, a cosmetic company that sells uh, products which are not tested on animals and are, don't have any animal products involved. And uh, we've been working with them in partnerships uh, with shark projects and seals. And they have about 600 stores around the world, and they've made their store windows available to uh, to make presentations about shark finning or the killing uh, of seals. And uh, so they've been uh, very, very active. They're a good example of how, uh, you know, a, a company, uh, uh, you know, a for-profit company can actually change social uh, consciousness and, and make a difference. How do we obtain a Lush Cosmetic product? Pardon? How, how can we obtain a product from Lush Cosmetics? Oh, well, Lush has about 600 stores around the world, mm. so they're pretty okay. easy to find. Okay, good, good. And is that also uh, listed on your website? Yes, and uh, we're also working on, with other companies like Quicksilver Surfing Company and uh, Paul Mitchell Shampoos, which, uh, you know, Paul Mitchell doesn't use uh, test on animals or use animal products also, and they're very supportive of many organizations. So we try to encourage that kind of social consciousness within within companies. And you mentioned earlier about a TV series that you have. Um, what, what did you say, Whale Wars? Yeah, I went to uh, Discovery and I said, look, you know, the most popular show on Discovery is about a bunch of guys going into rough, remote waters to catch crabs. And I said, I can give you a better show where we'll go into rougher waters, more remote waters, men and women from all over the world to save whales. It's got to be more interesting. And so that became Whale Wars. And we just had our first season, which became the top-rated Animal Planet show of all time. Oh, good. And uh, it's now going into its second season, and it's been played in Latin America, Europe, and uh, hopefully it'll be going into Japan. But uh, it's becoming pretty big, and uh, it's certainly raising people's awareness of, uh, of what's going on in the ocean. So it's, uh, we're quite happy with it. Um, I have a dear friend and, and also the executive producer of the show who's heard you speak in the past, thinks you're incredible, and just heard some incredible stories from you. You've shared with uh, me and my listeners um, a couple of them. Can you share with, can you share with us uh, maybe one or two more? Oh, about what in particular? Well, any, anything. Were you ever arrested yourself? Pardon? Were, were you ever arrested yourself? Oh, yeah, I get arrested all the time, but I've never been convicted of anything, you know, but we have to challenge some of these laws sometimes. I think probably the, the one story that it would be worthwhile relating is that, well, you know, why I do what I do. And it goes back to 1975 when uh, we came up with this idea. I was with Greenpeace at the time to save whales by blocking the harpoons. And, uh, you know, I found myself in a small boat in front of a Soviet harpoon vessel in the Pacific. And uh, they were every time he tried to get a shot, I would block the harpoon. And then the captain came down and screamed into the ear of the harpooner and then looked at us, smiled, and brought his finger across his throat. And that's when I realized that that tactic wasn't going to work. <laughs> and a few moments later, there was this horrendous explosion, and the harpoon flew over our head and slammed into the backside of a female in a pot of sperm whales. And she screamed. It was a very human-like scream, and she rolled on her side in a fountain of blood. And suddenly, the largest whale in the pod slapped the water with his tail and disappeared, and he swam right up underneath of us and threw himself at the Soviet harpooner to defend his pod, but they were waiting for him, and with another harpoon at point-blank range, they hit him. He screamed, fell back in the water, thrashing about in horrible agony, and as he did, I caught his eye, and he looked straight at me, and he dove, and then I saw a trail of bloody bubbles coming straight at us real fast, and he came up and out of the water at an angle, so the next move was to come down and just crush us, and I looked up into an eye, the eye the size of my fist, it was right there, and it and what I saw in that eye changed my life forever. I hmm. saw understanding. He understood what we were trying to do, and I could see the effort he made as he pulled himself back. He could have crushed us, and he didn't. 
and I saw his eye disappear beneath the surface, and he died. And so I feel really indebted to that whale for the fact that I'm still here. And ever since that day, I've said, I do what I do for him and for his kind, not for people. So I don't care what people say about what we do. Our clients are whales and sharks and seals. That's who we represent. You're wonderful. I really appreciate you joining us. Just tell our listeners again how they can contact you or your website. The best way is the sea shepherd, uh, dot org, S-E-A-S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D dot org, and that's our website. Thank you, Captain, for being with us. Oh, thank you.